Yes, yes, it's Sandland, the land of sand. The land of sand. Oh yes indeed, hello and welcome and it's not yet another fragrance review tonight. It's rather a, a uh, invitation and say to say let's talk about the 70s. Let's talk about the 70s. Many of you out there, uh, my fellow friends and subscribers, are from that decade. Maybe many of us have still memories of that decade. I was born in 1972, okay? Wow, good God, I'm out of 51 years ago, okay? And uh, obviously that means that I have limited, um, a limited capacity of memories, okay? At five, six, seven years old, you, you remember things, but they're mostly, mostly family-related things. And I can look back at the 70s, thanks to, uh, to this wonderful diary by my father, um, who wrote down basically every day. Uh, this is a diary that covers between 70 and 70 and 76, but I was 78 and so on. So that's good. I, I can look back and you know look at look at things that happen in the family and I, actually outside as well because he he really goes into p political things and historical things going on in the 70s, and and that's great. Um, I appreciate that uh, from him because he died in 79. So, so uh, you know, that was a shock for us in the 70s. Uh, so the 70s, if, in regards to my family, had good and bad times going. And I don't want to glorify the 70s either. I mean, and I actually do see a lot of similarities between now and the 70s. I mean, we had um, some, some, uh, some, uh, you know, economical crisis, terrorism, uh, weird world leaders that went all over the place, you know, and, 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 and many things that, that are similar, a similar poverty and, and struggles and, and, uh, you know, divided nations, divided, you know, people fighting one against each other, wars in, in, on different continents. So it was, it was the same old story over and over again. It seems history repeats itself and people never learn, right? So this is why I don't want to glorify the 70s at all. I just want to look back and take a, take a you know, take a deep breath and, 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 and take a look at those times. Because I think that at the same time, um, due to the fact that, that technology and information for, uh, flow was much slower than today, um, things were a bit more, you know, um, sophisticated at the time people were things had more character uh, or at least things that people did had more character for example music art movies uh, even cars okay uh, even the politicians had more character at the time uh, maybe or maybe not maybe that's never changing okay I don't know I, I'm not here to judge I just this is just a personal um, angle that I take on that particular decade and I'm gonna talk of course Fragrances as well, like uh, 1970, uh, Equipage by Hermès. What a wonderful, fresh, um, invigorating, classy fragrance. Uh, one of my um, favorite fragrances of the 70s. And I'm going to be popping up six fragrances of that decade. And obviously, starting with 1970, Equipage is the first of them. I love it because it's nice, sophisticated, and, and somehow very elegant. And, an easygoing, uh, light, woody, wonderful equipage Hermes from 1970. And uh, yeah, I mean, the USA was drawing out from Vietnam, weren't they? Uh, somewhere around the mid 70s and the oil crisis in 73 and, and, and uh, the, the Munich Olympics uh, with, with the terror attack against the Israeli uh, athletes in 72, right? Uh, then the, the Watergate uh, uh, problem. <laughs> Uh, the Watergate case uh, around 74, 75, right, with Nixon and, and all that. And I can remember uh, things like um, Idi Amin, if you talk about politics, uh, Uganda, right, what was going on there. Idi Amin, uh, what, what, a, what, a, what, a, what a horrible tyrant uh, to, to lead Uganda at the time. Um, and, uh, yeah. There was a lot of terrorism around in Germany as well because we had uh, the time the uh, RAF, the Rote Armee Fraktion. I remember them killing people left, right, and center. Okay, but also in Italy, um, I mean, it, it, there was a huge turmoil in the seventies. Uh, that's absolutely true. And and for example, in the UK, the towards the end of the seventies, the the um, the economic situation was very bad. 
and then Maggie Thatcher came on and, and did her thing and, and uh, tried to turn it around, taking some different angles, right? Um, but, but then the punk movement that, that came on, on that wave, you know, the, the against the establishment movement. Uh, but let's, let's go over the, the, the other side of the big pond, right? New York City. New York City was a mess in the 70s, you know, it was killings left, right and center all over the place, you know, the, the five big uh, families, mob families taking over the city and, 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 and violence was at every street corner, put it that way, okay? So, so if you talk Europe, if you talk Africa, Asia, uh, America, everywhere, there was turmoil, okay? And if you look at the same time, somehow art seemed to be more genuine. Um, there was tremendous music. I mean, rock music, really, the metal, uh, heavy metal was born there. Rock music. I remember like Black Sabbath and Motorhead and, and Deep Purple and Genesis. And, and uh, you know, I mentioned the punk movement there. Um, you know, what, what sort of genuine Robert Palmer came onto the scene and, and uh, like many things that happened, uh, you know, Disco was there, the Jackson Five. Oh my God, you know, you, you think about these things, it's, it's unbelievable what was going on. And in 1971, actually, one of my favorite soapy fragrances, Gainsborough G Man, saw the day of light. And I, it's still around. Uh, uh, actually, each of the fragrances I'm presenting are still around. Uh, G Man, Gainsborough, uh, wonderful, elegant, best soapy fragrance uh, of all time, 1971. Love it to bits. Okay. Uh, lots of. Um, Young artists died very early. I mean, Janis Joplin, Jim Morrison, Jimi Hendrix, uh, Elvis Presley. Um, but also, I remember the the, the, the Biko case in '77. Stephen Biko beaten to death by the South African uh, police. Very much apartheid going on uh, there at the time, right? Or I remember the great uh, Kalas, uh, the opera singer, dying in in the same year as Presley. Actually, in 1977. So. Uh, there were there was there was a there was a, uh, um, a, a try to um, kill President Ford somewhere around 50, 75, 76, right? I remember Yoko Ono and uh, and John Lennon and uh, you know doing their stuff, uh, protesting. You know, uh, there was still the time, obviously, of the hippies going as well, um, and and there was the time of interestingly. Uh, if you if you are looking into that particular history of the U.S., uh, not only the mob but the serial killers. I mean, all the big, big serial killers: Jeffrey Dahmer, Ted Bundy, uh, um, and all those guys uh, were actually in their in their heyday in the '70s. So it was like again yeah, huge turmoil, okay, and. Um, uh, but also in, in terms of, for, for example, science, I mean, people in the 70s were still going to the moon, okay, up until 71, uh, with that mission up there in the moon in 70. That was the last mission so far. Uh, if you believe in a man on the moon, it's not from the 70s, that song, R.E.M., but uh, the man on the moon. Or actually, the uh, I think during Nixon, uh, maybe the uh, decision was made to to create uh, the, the space shuttle, or was it Carter already? Anyway, Jimmy Carter, who died recently. Uh, but uh, the, the um, development of the space shuttle, which first launched, launched the first flight in 81, that was started, I think, in somewhere around 78, okay? And, um, and a wonderful fragrance came out in 76, uh, Denim, Italy. It's, uh, it's an Italian brand, this one, and this is just, uh, this is just so superb, so fresh, so fresh, spicy, leathery. That is just still blow, mind blowing. It came out as an aftershave at the time. Today, all you know, the toilette is around, still going very strong, still available, and still a very, very high benchmark of the seventies male fragrances that were very uh, heavy, heavy dose of uh, leather, patchouli, moss, pine, all that you know, uh, soapiness, ar aromatic, um, heavy. Uh, piney, uh, leathery stuff was, was, you know, boasting the market, okay? And, um, and denim definitely was, was one of these. Um, so, uh, <laughs> it's, if you look at fashion, for example, 
uh, it seems so dated, the 70s, uh, at this point. I mean, the 70s was really uh, an ugly decade for fashion, if you put it that way. I mean, just just look at the wallpapers. I mean, not even talking bell-bottom trousers, okay, at this point. Uh, but the wallpaper in, 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 in people's flats and houses was just, my God, and, and, and that's just... And you know, uh, it was just crazy. I think, uh, and but but it had a character. That's what I wanted to say. It had a character that, um, if you put all this together, the fashion, the cars. I mean, look at the cars. What sort of cars they did? Look at U.S. car manufacturing in the seventies in Detroit, and you can look at the the, the car brands um, that were that were still you know Oldsmobile, uh, Plymouth. Uh, Cadillac, Chevrolet, you know, Ford, uh, look at the cars that they've done at the time. Um, so, so, you know, if you look around today in New York City, you only see Kias, Hyundai's and Toyotas. You know, it's true. Um, you don't see the big, um, powerful, you know, American cars out there. Um, and it remind me of Starsky and Hodge, right? Or Streets of San Francisco. Uh, that's that's the stuff I grew up with, and we played on the streets. We didn't have the computers. We we played football. I mean, sports in the seventies. I mean, I remember uh, you know obviously being in Germany, Germany winning the World Cup in seventy four, um, the Czech Czechoslovakia winning the European Cup in, in nineteen seventy six. My God! But I remember uh, John McEnroe and Bjorn Borg. Bjorn Borg was a huge star in the seventies. I mean, he was he was the king of the seventies in tennis. Okay, but I remember John McEnroe. Coming into this onto the scene in 1977 in uh, in Wimbledon, wow! Everybody's like, wow, who's this guy? You know, totally different uh, vibes and moods and and the, and, and the games they played uh, with um, Jimmy Connors, Jimmy Connors, God, Formula One. I mean, we had Jochen Rind who died in '70, I think, uh, in, in that accident. Formula Nicky Lauda, remember Nicky Lauda's accident in '76, I think it was. Uh, those guys put their lives on the line. Time. Those were men. If I look at Formula One on TV today, they are like kids, you know, running around in scooters. And, you know, I don't want to downplay. It. They're great guys, I'm sure. But come on, nothing compared to Emerson Fittipaldi, Johan Rent, uh, René Arnoux, uh, Niki Lauda, uh, Andretti, Mario Andretti, uh, Gilles Villeneuve, Gilles Villeneuve, and, and these guys, you know, they were men. Put it that way. And, and the movies as well. Like, Movie stars were different than today. Uh, obviously, it's 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 a thing of fashion. I mean, talking Steve McQueen, Paul Newman, Burt Reynolds, Burt Reynolds. I always thought of Burt Reynolds that he must be a he. That guy must be a like a prick, uh, and you know, with his you know hairy chest and his muscles all over the place. Let me tell you, Burt Reynolds was was one of the most genuine, nicest Hollywood actors. I've read about him. I've I've seen countless um, interviews with him. One of the most genuine and nicest people in Hollywood of all time, Burt Reynolds. Burt Reynolds, the biggest star, biggest movie star of the 70s, along with the few names that I mentioned. Uh, one of my favorite movies is actually with Klaus Kinski, Werner Herzog, uh, Wojciech, Nosferatu, Agira, the Wrath of God. Um, great collaborations between uh, Kinski and Herzog, the European movie talking about. But also Alain Delon had some great movies out there. L'Homme Pressé, for example, or Monsieur Klein. I mean, the, the cultural, the culture, the music, art itself, Andy Warhol. I mean, come on, you know, literature. Um, everything was much more, had more, much more character, that's what I would say. And was much more gener uh, genuine and less, much less commercialized, okay? And fragrances were just amazing. In 1977, Devin. By Aramis, the, the, what's the name of it? Country or the Cologne, okay? This smells like the English, English countryside, and it does. And it was a wonderful green, uh, spicy fragrance by Devin. This is actually uh, one of the, the vintage versions. Absolutely brilliant uh, by Aramis, I should say. Aramis Devin, wonderful. And 1977, folks. And look at the bottles, actually. I mean, talking about design. Look at the bottles, big shoulders, uh, manly bottles, manly, manly design, okay? Nothing for sissies there. Okay? Obviously things were, were bad in terms of, there was lots of racism uh, still around, obviously all over the place. Yeah, I, I mentioned apartheid, but also in the States, I mean, 
I just remember at the end of 60s, beginning of 70s, how James Brown changed or tried to change that around uh, and, and, and tried to make his own influence in, into that, into, into that um, um, racial divide in the US. Uh, but, um, but then again, I, mem I remember the rumble in the jungle, uh, Muhammad Ali, and it helped me, helped me in the comments who was the other guy. But it wasn't George Foreman, was he? Was it George Foreman? Rumble in the jungle. The box match in somewhere in Africa, I think it was. Like, unbelievable events. Uh, like, it was crazy. Uh, I, 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 like, when you read about it and when you rewatch it on YouTube, you can watch everything on YouTube. Everything is up there. Absolutely fantastic. Um, 1978 was my favorite year in terms of fragrances of, of that decade because two of my favorite fragrances come out that decade. Lagerfeld, Cologne, uh, or classic as it's called now, and Aramis. Uh, Aramis? Oh, Azzaro Purom. Azzaro Purom. I wear this today. I love it. I, I, this, this is the fragrance that I wear uh, most of the time these days. Um, absolutely stunning. Again, still fresh, spicy, deeply aromatic barbershop fragrances. Okay, So uh, a true and utter fingerprint olfactory's fingerprint of the 1970s all of these fragrances that i have just mentioned they truly and utterly are and they're still around and that proves that they stand the test of time why because it was genuine because it was high quality because it was creative and just a hundred percent um living up to the image of the particular brand and not just uh, you know shitting out fragrances left right and center okay if Zago came out with something they made sure that it's up to the to the quality level of the brand same with Lagerfeld and all the others that I mentioned okay so being a child of these of the of the 70s um uh puts me in a position that I, I'm grateful that I knew that decade I miss lots of people of that decade obviously family that i that i knew and that i cherished loved and are lots of people that um actors musicians artists uh writers um that were around that were geniuses i mean if if I, like even the movies i mean like come on i mentioned a few of them but the american movies as well my jaws jaws i mean jaws like one of my favorite movies again spielberg you know duel i mean god um it's, 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 it's so difficult to comprehend. Robert Shaw, Roy, Schne Roy Scheider, okay? Uh, Richard Dreyfuss, I like, you know, it's, it's just uh, Ryan O'Neill, love story. He, you know, God bless him, he just died um, probably yesterday, okay, 82 years old. So, so there are less and less of these people around. And, um, but it's still good to remember these days, good to, or those days, good to revisit them. And you know what? The other thing was in the 70s, I was just watching a, a um, late night, a German late night show from 1977 um, with, uh, with one of the guests being Klaus Kinski, right? And you know what the, the, the people did in the 1970s talk shows, late night shows, okay, talk shows, they're talking to each other. What did they do? I tell you. They lit a cigarette in the middle of the show. Actually, they were they were helping each other out with the with the with the lighter, right? And so, so if you remember the products that were around, uh, like cigarettes and, and and I mentioned cars and and the old, <laughs> things that were somehow more. I don't know. People were more easygoing about these things. People knew that uh, uh, cigarettes cause cancer, right? This still went on. And so. Uh, and you could still, if you walked into a shop, you could still, uh, you could still see which one is a Camel, Marlboro, or whatever, your Gitan, or whatever you want. Okay, so um, it was different times. Different times are uh, worth to look back, worth to, to talk about, worth very much worth to read about, to listen to, to, to the music, to the art, to the literature, to the people, to the politicians even, uh, some good ones, some bad ones. Uh, to the history, read the history books, take a look at the 70s um, and remember them and draw your lessons and, and uh, draw some energy from, from that time. And, uh, and yeah, and, and let's look forward. Uh, let me know what you think about this uh, lengthy um, episode. Maybe we do one of the, of the 80s. Okay, thanks very much and see you soon. Bye bye.